us no oxygen, or O2 as it's called. We need it to live, right? But what about O3? O3 is ozone, and it also plays a huge role in our existence, not in the same way though. 30 kilometers above the Earth's surface concentrates 90% of the ozone in the global atmosphere. It absorbs the harmful ultraviolet light from the sun. You know, this is the one that makes you look red in the summer? At low altitudes, or troposphere as it's called, ozone is a toxic secondary pollutant. Secondary means that it is not emitted directly in the atmosphere, but it forms due to the emission of other pollutants and presence of sunlight. Surface ozone is a kind of photochemical pollution which is produced by human activities mainly transport, power plants and industries. These activities produce nitrogen oxides and hydrocarbons which are responsible for photochemical reaction to form ozone under sunlight conditions. This is also one of the sources of photochemical smog. In fact, due to rising temperatures, sunny afternoons, low clouds, low pressure, ozone enters the season of high incidence in summer. That's why the ozone levels are much higher in the summer rather than the winter. That's a problem though if you consider that people spend more time outdoors in the summer. Ozone is hazardous for the human health because it can cause respiratory problems such as asthma and bronchitis, especially to the young and the old people. In addition, ozone interferes in photosynthesis and damages the plants and the crops. Ozone also damages materials. It reacts with materials like rubber, which limits their lifetime and results in economic losses. Also, ozone production rate increases with the temperature, which is increasing due to climate change. One more good reason to combat climate change, right? Let's have a look at Beijing now. As we can see, ozone concentrations in Beijing is on the rise year by year recently. The ozone levels peak in May to September period and reduce in the winter because of the limited sunlight. Ozone with a high value at 2 to 5 in the afternoon. Spatially, ozone concentrations in northern Beijing is higher than that in the southern due to strong solar radiation. And here is some suggestion of Beijing. Because ozone is not directly emitted to the atmosphere, we can't just place controls on emissions of ozone itself. So the, and we also can't control sunlight, which we wouldn't want to control anyway. So the only controls that we can have are on the substances that react in the atmosphere to form ozone, and that's the oxides of nitrogen and the volatile organic compounds. And in Europe, uh, there have been quite major controls on the emissions of the volatile organic compounds. And this has led to a marked reduction in peak ozone concentrations. So we know that policies that control emissions of the pollutants from which ozone is formed are quite successful in reducing the peak concentrations, which are those most harmful to health and to plants. According to the Chinese air quality standard, the 8-hour maximum ozone levels should not exceed the 167 micrograms per cubic metre. The World Health Organization suggests the value of 100 micrograms per metre cubed in an 8-hour mean. Ozone can stay in the atmosphere for about 20 days, so it can travel to other regions and countries. So, what can we do to improve the current concentration level? Conserve energy, use public transport, bikes or walk, use environmentally friendly paints, avoid ozone exceeding the standard day to do activities outdoors. We have a lot to do and a lot to understand about air quality. Do you know more about ozone through this video? I hope a better understanding of the sources and contributions of ozone and other atmospheric pollutants will help us lead a better life.